Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron. This is Tucker. This is Scott. And today we're going to talk about accusations against the Church of Christ. Are we members of a cult or are we not? Things like that. We'll talk about it. Hang tight. All right, so we're back. This is episode eight. And uh, the last episode was on what is the Church of Christ? What is the New Testament church, right? And we talked about different names that the New Testament, or really not even names, they're more designations, descriptions of the church you read about in Scripture. And so we sort of reference this, but a lot of times when we are trying to get people to leave this idea of, you know, most people think that if you are a Christian, you have to be a member of a denomination. Like they think that there's no way to be a follower of the Bible without being in one. And so when we meet people and we say, no, no, we're trying to get you to leave that to be like, to leave denominationalism, just go back to the Bible. They normally accuse us of being a denomination. And so we really want to talk about that in this um, episode. And so what we have is different accusations that we commonly hear that honestly, if you watch this podcast, if you're a member of the church already, then maybe you've, pr- you've probably already heard these. Um, maybe somebody will bring it up to you. If you're not a member of the church and you're like following the podcast and you're like kind of curious as to what we say and you agree with some and you don't agree with others, this is something that if you Google, these are some of the accusations that come up yeah. that I remember the first time I saw them, I was just like, oh. and then I studied them and I was like, oh, okay. So it's like anything else. We want you to hear this here so we can explain to you what they mean, why normally we're misrepresented anyway, and go from there. So, all right. The first one that I remember, I'll start on this one. So I remember when I was um, just out of college, uh, surprise, surprise, and I moved to North Carolina and I was talking to a girl that I'd met and she said, oh, you're a member of the Church of Christ. Like, aren't you guys a cult? And I was like, no. She's like, I think you are. I was like, really? So I got on Google and I searched, are members of the Church of, is the Church of Christ a cult, right? And so I basically found a couple websites. And so I said, okay, wow, my dad taught me follow the Bible wherever it leads, even if that's something that like we're teaching that growing up that's not right, follow the Bible. So I started basically going through and all these websites, I started like listing, okay, this is what the accusation is. And I'd look into seeing if what the Bible taught matched up with it or not, right? Mm-hmm. So was I in a cult? And so I actually later wrote down some things, and this is the most recent Bible. I've been transferring my notes as I change Bibles. So I want to read, these are two different uh, descriptions or definition, right, of what a cult is. So I want to read the descriptions and then we'll discuss it and say, okay, are we a member of of a cult like that? So the first one's from Merriam Webster, um, the definition of a cult, right? So they have three, you know, one, two, and three definitions. The first one is, says unorthodox religion. Okay. So unorthodox religion. So what does orthodox mean? What's orthodox mean? Do you want to answer it or? No, I was going to play off. Okay. (laughs) Okay. All right. Yeah. What does orthodox mean? What does it mean? Yeah. Orthodox means like original, yeah, right? So it's like, if you look at the Bible, right? What would Orthodox religion for Christianity be? Yeah, it'd be the Bible. Bible. It'd be the Bible, right? So the only way to know if you're in an Orthodox or unorthodox is say, well, what do I teach, practice, believe, and does it come and match up with what? The Bible. This. So what are we saying in every episode of this podcast? Go back to what? Orthodoxy. The source of orthodoxy, right? We're not talking about capital orthodoxy, like Eastern Orthodox or Russian Orthodox. Those are denominations, right? What we're saying is go back and see what the scriptures teach. Yeah. So if a definition, at least that one of a cult, is someone that's got unorthodox religion, and we're saying go back to the source of here, then we wouldn't fit that definition, Mm -hmm. right? We're we're the opposite. We're the opposite. We're saying we want you to be orthodox, right? I want you to be as orthodox as you could possibly be. <laughs> yeah. I had a guy once, I was in Tennessee preaching and he came, he didn't want to listen to me preach, but he came after the service finished to basically just argue with me about Calvinism. So we talked for like four hours and he basically said, what you're teaching um, is unorthodox. And I said, well, what's your definition of orthodoxy? And he was going back to the 1500s. I said, you got to go back, wait, you're, you're 1500 years too late, man. You got to go back to the New Testament and what we're, what I'm teaching and what you're teaching what I'm teaching comes from here, right? Mm-hmm. And he would, of course, allege what he was teaching comes from there too. So orthodoxy comes from scripture, right? That's what that word means if you ever hear it. So we wouldn't fit that definition of unorthodox because mm-hmm. because literally you can't show me a single thing that I believe or teach that I can't point to in scripture yeah. and show your principle. So we don't, we don't fit that definition. All right, here's the second one. Great devotion to a person, idea, or movement. All right, well, well got to dive into this one. Do we have a great devotion to, to a person? 
Yeah, who? Yeah, Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, guilty as charged, and, and right? The movement he started, and the movement <laughs> Jesus started, and the idea of Christianity. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but that's not what people when they when they think of by that definition, every religion is a cult. Yeah, pretty much. But when I'm so, sure when Miriam Webster wrote that, they meant like a person, not Jesus. Yeah. Like they would say, you know, like the Mormons are devoted to Joseph Smith because they say that he was inspired, which we disagree with, but they're nice people. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, Seventh-day Adventists, Mary Baker Eddy, Christian Science, all these different groups yeah. that have a person. The that Pope. They, yeah. Okay. Think about like a cult like in um, Waco, Texas, David Koresh. All right. That they were devoted to this human. Now, yes, Jesus was human and divine. But we're not talking about Jesus. We're talking about a regular guy who's not inspired. They were devoted to him so much that the men like gave them their wives. What, oh yeah, I mean, ugh. yeah. But that you know, that, if you're in a cult, just wait for the leader to ask uh, for some private time to discuss things with, with your wife. wife. That's how you know you're yeah. in a cult. Yeah. yeah. So what we're saying is like, do we have a devotion to anybody other than Jesus? No, I don't have a devotion. I love you guys. I don't have a devotion to you. No. And we've had we've had this before. We both said, look, if we think something, you're me and Scott have had deep discussions before about where he's like, man, I think you're wrong in this place. And I think he's wrong. And we talk it out. A lot of times he's right, but, but we discuss things and we have the, we have a devotion to one person, which is Jesus Christ. We have a devotion to God. Right. So that, that we don't fit that definition as it's written. Right. Okay. Third definition from this dictionary, a system of religious beliefs. Okay. That. I guess Literally that's everyone like, with a religion. Yeah. So that's that's like a <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's probably like that sub definition. We don't even need to. Do we have a system of religious yeah. beliefs? Yes. We'd say the scriptures, right? Yeah. No creed or anything other than that. So all right. Now this is another one I got off Billy Graham because I wanted to say, okay, that's what a dictionary says. What is a religious organization? So Billy right. Graham's website says this. Number one, they claim they have the truth. Okay. Again, every religion. <laughs> I mean Jesus, right? What did yeah. Jesus say in John 14, 6? I am the way, the truth. So Jesus says he's the truth. And so we would say scripture is what? John 17, 17. Well, it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, my my words are truth. Mm -hmm. John 17, 17. So I would say, well, this is truth. So do I have it? I mean, I I got this. I I have the truth. Yeah. Does that mean I'm in a cult? No. Because every other person who would say they're not in a cult. Now, the next definition I think helps. They reject the Bible. Do we reject the Bible? No. No. It's the mm-hmm. only book that I'm telling you is going to get you to heaven. I reject all the other books. All the other books. Yeah. Bingo. Right. They reject the Bible or say that their founder's writings are divine. Now, once again, <laughs> w- they <laughs> don't mean, but like for instance, Billy Graham, right? If yeah. he were alive and I could talk to him, I'd say the founder's writings are divine. Uh, Christ, Christ founded Christianity. Do you think his writings are divine? And he'd probably say yes. And we would both understand Jesus didn't write anything himself, but John 16, he inspired through the Holy Spirit, yeah. the apostles, and yeah. they wrote. Mm-hmm. Second Thessalonians 3 talks about, and 2.15 talks about the writings or spoken word from the apostles who wrote the commandments of the Lord, Paul. So we would say, okay, that's not what it's talking about. The only person's writings that we think are divine are God's mm-hmm. or the people that he inspired in the first century. We don't think there's additional revelation like the Book of Mormon, um, those sorts of, that sort of description. So we don't fit that definition either. Yeah. Okay. This is a third one from, from Billy Graham. They reject the divinity of Jesus. Do we reject the divinity of Jesus? We do not. No, of course not. We have a whole nother program on answering the error where we answer other videos and we basically try to pick apart a Jehovah's Witness video that says that Jesus is not deity. That's yeah. the whole point of our video is showing, it's for an hour, hour long, I think. Maybe it's 30 minutes long. We, We're saying we Jesus is that. deity. Yeah. In our last season, we had a short video on that, yeah. in, on the in-between that season and this one. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely not that. Yeah. So, at least those two different definitions from different locations of a cult, we don't fit the definition. So, if you have a different definition, I'd love to hear it. But pretty much, if I show you everything I got from here, the only way you could say we have a cult is if you'd say Christianity is a cult. Yeah. Some people do. And to their definition, they'd say you have a devotion to Jesus. That's why you're in a cult. I'd say, well, guilty as charged, if that's what you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But that's normally not what people say. Uh, Normally, I think a lot of people, when they, when they say you're a member of a cult, what they mean is I don't like your views. Yeah. I literally have on my notes. Um, Sometimes people can't answer your arguments, so they have to slander you. Yeah. 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 What is that? uh, Argumentum ad hominem. Let me just attack your character. Attack the man. So I'll just use a word that sounds really scary, cult, Mm -hmm. especially in our society, because, hey, you know, 
what do you see cults? They're the scary villain people in the movies. Yeah. And you want to get people to run, you just say you're in a cult. Oh, yeah. It's really culty. I think about this, like Acts 24 and verse 4, uh, verse 5. Paul is basically um, on trial, okay? And if you look in Acts 24, verse 5, for we, this is Tertullus, who's basically an orator accusing Paul. We found this man, we found Paul, a plague, a creator of dissension among the Jews throughout the world. Well, why? Because he's saying, leave Judaism, become a Christian. So, of course, they don't like him. Mm -hmm. A ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. That word sect in Greek is heresies, basically. It's where we get our word heresy, which means you're causing division from the true church, right? So, these people literally are accusing the Apostle Paul, who's inspired, of being a heretic and basically saying, you're trying to divide and get this group to go off and follow you, right? They accuse Paul of that. How did Paul respond? Look at verse 15. When Paul finally gets a chance to talk, in verse 15, he says, uh, verse 14. Okay, yeah, 25, 24, 14. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so they say this is heresy, and here's what I say, I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things written in the law and the prophets. And Jesus said in Luke 24, 44 and following, that all the prophets, the writings and the prophets, and Psalms spoke of him. So basically what Paul is saying is you're accusing me of being in a sect. Mm -hmm. You're accusing me of being in a denomination. You're accusing me of being in a cult. You can say what you want, but I'm worshiping the God of heaven yeah. Yeah. according to all the things that the Bible teaches, right? That'd be the, that'd be the modern day like paraphrase. Mm -hmm. So you can call anybody you want to a cult. If I just didn't have an answer, a response to somebody's argument, I could say, well, you're in a cult. And I'm like, okay, well, explain to me why I am. Like, let's hear your argument. I, I'd like to hear a logical argument. Yeah. But most people don't make that. Well, at that point, when when somebody, when whenever you reach the point of conversation where somebody's just going to apply a label yeah. and dismiss it, yeah. there's there's no more discussion. Anyway. No. Because it's, they're not interested they're in not explaining interested why in they think you're in a cult. They're yeah. just saying, uh, I'll slap this label on you and move on with my life and not think about it anymore. Yeah. It's like when you're discussing a Bible verse with someone and they say, oh, it's out of context. And I'm like, all right. Like, let's open up our Bibles. Let's look at the context. No, no, I don't want to. It's like, okay, that wasn't a le legitimate objection. Yeah, so All right. You're dishonest. All right. Let's look at a second accusation. Now, works-based. Some people say, you guys in the Church mm -hmm. of Christ, okay, teach a works-based salvation. And I'm like, I'm just teaching what Paul and Peter taught. But they still say, you teach a works-based salvation. Now, um, Tucker, did you want to say something about, about this one? Is there a... Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. On Answer in the Air, we did a whole, oh, yeah. we did a whole hour long episode, Don Blackwell and I, we have a show called Answer in the Air where people submit videos and we watch them. And so we did one on, does the church of Christ teach a works-based salvation? It's actually a guy who left the church of Christ, he says, and says that we have a works-based salvation. So we watch through his argument and basically say, well, this is what the Bible says. But I mean, some people have this idea that baptism is the only thing in, that the Bible is a work and nothing else is a work. What does the Bible say about lots of other things that people teach? Like, Someone that says you just have to believe. What's the Bible say belief is? No. It's a work. It's a yeah. work. I mean, John 6, 28, 29, they asked Jesus, what are the works that we must do? And Jesus says, believe in the one believe. who sent me. Yeah. So, believe. What are the works we need to do? Believe. Isn't that ironic? I mean, other passages too. What are some other passages? I know you guys know this. I was going to say that video is very helpful. I recently watched it and trying to deal with that topic. Yeah, because basically what they say is we say you have to believe. They're like, yep, I'm cool with that. You have to repent. Oh, I'm cool with that. Uh, you have to be baptized. No, that's a work. I'm like, repentance is a work. Yeah. In Matthew 12, 41, it references the people of Jonah's day. And in Jonah 3, 10, it says when God saw their works, when right. God saw their works, that they had turned, right? And God, so is repentance a work? The Bible says it is, but most people that accuse us of works-based salvation will say, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Belief is a work. First Thessalonians. Was it Matthew 3, 8? Uh, about, what's um, that? Let me see. Let me pull that up. I think that's one. I was Works fitting repentance or something like that. John uh, the Baptist. Yeah. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Bear bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do something that shows you've repented. Yeah. First Thessalonians Produce one three something. says your work of faith. So if someone says well, John six twenty eight. That's not what he's saying. First Thessalonians one three and I believe Second Thessalonians one eleven says your work of faith. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Most people think Galatians two eight nine saved by grace through faith not of works. I think those works are talking about works a lot Moses because the next context he discusses is how God's broken down the middle wall of partition. And they were boasting. Why? Galatians 6.16, no, not 6.16, 6.12 maybe, says they the, the false teachers want to circumcise you so they can boast in their flesh, your flesh. So he's not talking about that. Something can be a gift and you still have to do something to receive it. Can it not? It can. It how can. would that work? Um, okay, well, 
Salvation's like, a gift. It is a gift, and you, and you do have to do something to obey it. I mean, in our practical life, I can give my uh, my child a gift, and they're going to have to do something for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you talk about holidays or birthdays or whatever. You might give a gift, and yeah, I mean, the simple thing they got to unwrap it. But uh, then they have to they have to use it properly too. You can know about that. I mean, I think I mentioned some of that before when we were talking. Mm-hmm. Not only do you have to do something to receive it, in the case of a child, it's pretty simple. They have to unwrap it. They have to receive it. They have to reach mm-hmm. out. They have to go get it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I can give you a car. You got to go pick it up. Yeah. You know? If you own a dealership and you say, we're having this great big giveaway. We're giving away a free car. And uh, you have to co- all you have to do is come down and put your name on a piece of paper and be entered in the drawing. Yeah, I can give you a gift of my will. And Scott comes down, he puts his name down, he's entered in the drawing, mm-hmm. he goes home. Later, they say, Scott, we drew your name. Come down and collect your brand new 2021 Ford F-150. Oh, buddy, the Lightning? Oh, buddy, I don't know, mm-hmm. maybe, yes. That's the one. Mine's a 2012, yeah. I haven't looked into any other ones. So anyway, Scott wins this this truck. He has to drive down and sign some paperwork. Would Scott say, look at this truck I earned? That's right. You'd be like, no, it's a gift, I want it. Isn't it awesome? And, and you say, whoa, whoa, was- no, no, no. That, it can't be a gift. You had to sign some paperwork. You had to drive down there. Right. And you'd say. No, they were giving me the gift. They have the right to determine the terms. And that's what I was going to say about the will thing. I started to mention that. Yeah. I can leave you something in my will. Yep. Are you going to earn it? No. Is no. it going to be a gift? Yes. It's going to be a gift from me post my life ending. Yeah. But it's still a gift from me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're still going to have to deal with the, 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 the I don't know what you want to call it. The, terms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how, terms. How, how, a, how a will is executed. Yeah. You know, yeah. with the estate. You're going to have to deal with that. So, yeah, I mean, when you look at, you have to watch that other video because time-wise we got to move on, but you can go watch that. Does the work, uh, the Church of Christ teach a works-based salvation answer in the air episode? It'll be in the podcast resource uh, page as well. What about legalistic? Someone says, you know, you think you have to obey God's law, the law of Christ, Galatians 6, 1 and 2, right? Law of faith, Romans yeah. three twenty six six two. 6, 2. Yep. So Christianity is a law. Mm-hmm. There is a law that you have to follow. It's not the law of Moses, right? And it works a little differently. But whenever people say you're a legalist because you have to think you have to do that, and they'll say, you're just like the Pharisees. What did Jesus condemn the Pharisees for? Yeah, what did the Pharisees do that was different? Did they say, follow God's law and follow it to the best of your ability? Or what did they say, actually, the Pharisees? And they said you got to do other things besides the law, extra things. And a matter of fact, yep. on the areas where they did do what the law said, Jesus said, you, you ought to have done these That's right. and the other, and not the leaving the other undone. He yep. commended them when they were following the letter of the law. Yeah, Tucker, read, go to Matthew. Go to Matthew 15. In Matthew chapter 15, um, read verse 6. Yeah, read Matthew 15, 6. He need not honor his father for the sake of your tradition you have made void the word of God. So he says, you've made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Basically, if you look at verse 3, why do you transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? Jesus never condemned the Pharisees for trying to keep the law of Moses. Jesus kept the law of Moses perfect. Is Jesus a legalist? Hmm. No. You be, I mean, I don't hope you'd not call That's Jesus right. a legalist. Jesus kept the law of Moses perfectly. Mm-hmm. What Jesus condemned the Pharisees for was when they said, oh, this is God's law? Don't worry about that. Keep man's law. Yeah, it's like this. Uh, Jesus, please come into my heart. You're making of no effect baptism. When somebody tells me that I'm a legalist for saying the scriptures say you have to be baptized to be saved, here's in essence what they're saying. They're saying what you just said, which yeah. is if they if you teach a sinner's prayer, you're saying God's word says repent and be baptized. I'm teaching something different over God's word. That's right. You're actually the legalist. You are creating a doctrine that mm-hmm. says this is what you need to do, and you are making of no effect what Jesus commanded about confessing his name before men or repenting. Maybe you'll say, oh, yeah, well, you you are going to confess his name before men. Like, okay, well, then the sinner's prayer didn't save you, Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. it's one of those two. You're yeah. not going to be saved by asking Jesus into your heart, and and that's it. Or you're going to have to say there's something else besides that I have to do. Mm-hmm. And anyway, you, anytime, you're making other things of no effect. Anytime you say, well, God said this, but I say this, and you say something different, that's legalism. You're making yeah. laws for God. Right. And in Romans chapter 10, do you have you have Romans, Tucker? I can get it. Go to Romans chapter 10 and right. read verses uh, like 2 through 4. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God. But they have not, a zeal. They're zealous for God. Yeah. 
but not according to knowledge. But they're ignorant of what God's word says. Keep reading. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. So God has a righteousness. They mm-hmm. they rejected that because they were ignorant of it and they wanted to make their own righteousness. Read right. verse and four. what is righteousness? It's what God has told you what to God do. What God has said. Read verse four. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So Christ is the end of the law to righteousness to everyone who believes what? I mean, that's that's present tense present participle talking about believing everything christ taught and then in later in 10 he's going to talk about israel verse one what he wishes they would do to be saved so you're only legalistic if you make up laws for god and ignore his word yep yeah hey everybody thanks for listening to the authentic christian podcast this podcast is sponsored by the gospel broadcasting network or gbn for short you can hop on the app store search gospel broadcasting network and you can download the app and there's this show many other great shows that you can watch or listen to and uh, start learning more about the bible and uh, why we're here what our purpose is thanks for listening all right last last objection we have seven or eight minutes did Alexander Campbell start the Church of Christ? All right, so let me explain this. We referenced earlier there was a Stone Campbell movement in the 1800s, right? These were guys who were members of denominations. Campbell started out Presbyterian. His dad was a Presbyterian minister. Then they left and became a member of a Baptist association, finally left that in the 1830. And so they basically said he was born in 1786. Presbyterian, Baptist, saw some things that he thought were not what the New Testament taught, was trying to examine it, and he basically said, drop all human names. Some people didn't like that. They started slandering, calling him Campbellites, right? If a guy says, I'm just a Christian, and you don't want him to be just a Christian, you have to start thinking of something to call him because you won't just say, oh, you're just a Christian and you're giving up these human names. They start calling him Campbellites, right? And so in 1828, I have a quote. Somebody asked him, what is Campbellism? Because people were calling him Campbell. It's like Methodism. They were saying this guy started his own denomination. Campbell said, uh, they asked him what it is. He said, it's a nickname of reproach invented and adopted by those whose views, feelings, and desires are all sectarian, all denominational, who cannot conceive of a Christianity in any other light than an ism. He's basically saying people who can't understand how you could be a Christian and not be a member of a denomination, don't, they don't understand how it's even possible. They say, well, you have to be a member of a denomination. So instead of saying, wait a minute, nobody in the New Testament was, they start making up a name to call Campbell. Um, this is another one in uh, 18, I don't know when it is, but a New Orleans newspaper called Campbell the founder of a new denomination, the founder of a church. And he wrote a letter back to the newspaper and said this, I've always repudiated all human heads and human names for the people of the Lord. And we'll feel very thankful if you'll correct the erroneous impression which your article may have made and representing me as the founder of a religious denomination. So in New Orleans, they see droves of people following this, listening to this preacher, and they think, oh, he, he started a new church. And he's like, no, please write in your newspaper that what you wrote was wrong. I didn't f- found anything. I just want you to go back to what? To the Bible. This. To the scripture. Go back right. to the scriptures. So that's what he said about it. What about what about the fact that there's there's records before him? Way before. Before he was born. Way before. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can look, if you like to read, if you've ever heard of the anti, which means before Nicene, which is just what they classify people before the Council of Nicaea in 325, the anti before 325 writers, the early church writers, they use the title Church of Christ. Well, why? Because it's in the scripture. Yeah. He didn't create that title. Romans 16, 16 has it. Now, they didn't refer to the church as only by that name, just like we don't. We call it the Lord's Church, the New Testament Church. They called it by many names. But you've got Ignatius of Antioch, Clement, Origen, Hippolytus, Cyprian, Julius, Africanus, Dionysius, all those guys that I looked up right before we started on my software. But the truth is, it doesn't matter how many of those guys used it because it's in scripture. They're not inspired, right? Scripture's inspired. That's right. And so like, if that's not early enough for you, that's 1700 years before Alexander Campbell's born. I mean, and it's in scripture. I mean, I could give you reference and article and we will, we'll put some articles in the podcast resource page that show in the 60s, eight churches of Christ, groups of churches of Christ in England in the, in the 1660s. 100 years before Alexander Campbell was born. Um, they called themselves the name of Church of Christ. That's just the name they chose. They had baptism by immersion, all right? They celebrated the Lord's Supper and had elders and deacons. Yep. There's a group that was called the Anabaptists. They said falsely called the Anabaptists. They called themselves the Church of Christ. They taught baptism for the remission of sins. They had some stuff Calvinist, Calvinistic-wise that I think they were off on. But everyone was engulfed in Calvinism in the 1500s and 1600s. Yeah, they were trying. They were trying. And that's all we're saying is try to, to study your Bible and mm-hmm. say, 
Is this what the Bible teaches? And if your answer is no, just go back to the Bible. Yeah, just give it up. Just yeah. admit, just change. Be yeah. willing to change. Don't get locked into this idea of, you know, our father's religion. Yeah. Follow the faith of our fathers. Yeah. No, follow the faith of the scriptures. That's right. And if you find you've done something wrong, well, just change, repent of it. That's what that is. That's right. To change your mind about something, right? Yeah. yeah. And that follows suit with the action. So yeah. you you make that change. And that's that's the most that you can do. Yeah, that's you right. You have the Bible. You can read it, look at it and read it, and do your very best to be honest and sincere about what you read and follow it to the best of your ability. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, what what else can you do? Yeah. And that's, that's what we're saying. That's all you can saying. do is your best. That's yep. what we're saying to that's do. That's what we're saying. And that's what that's what Campbell was trying to do. Yeah. And he got slandered for it. Yeah. And there was a lot of group of guys. He basically was just a really good preacher. He was. Other guys. A really good preacher. A really good preacher. And everyone said, wow, this guy's such a good preacher. People are following him. He's starting his own church. And he's saying, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. Let me give you a parallel. Uh, Get your your Bible app out. Go back to the Old Testament. Look up 2 Chronicles 34. And uh, while he's looking, just, Yeah. yeah, on that footnote, just to tell that off, he wanted to do his best. Yep. He didn't start it. The That's history right. shows you can look up records. Oh yeah, churches of Christ throughout history, mm-hmm. well before he came on the scene, way so before he didn't start the Church yeah. of Christ. That's and lots irrefutable. You can't prove that he did it. You can prove the opposite. You can prove he didn't. Yeah, with history. If you said Aaron Gallagher started the Church of Christ, all you'd have to do is look before I was born and see, wow, they existed before he's born. He that's didn't right. start it. And that's what you can look all the way back to scripture 1800 years before he's born and he didn't start Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So read Second Chronicles 34, uh, 14 and just read a couple verses. While they were bringing out the money that had been brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given through Moses. Then Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan, the secretary, I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. Shaphan brought the book to the king and further reported to the king all that was committed to your servants they are doing. Okay, that's good. So here's what happens. In 2 Chronicles 34, which is the very end chronologically of the people of Israel before they go into Babylonian captivity, right? What happens is he finds a copy of the law and he basically says, look, we need to read this and obey it because there were certain things they hadn't been obeying. Same thing happens, Hezekiah, Josiah. They find something they're not doing and they say, (coughs) we need to go back and we found the book of the law. We need to obey it. Did they invent the law of Moses? No. Did they start a new form of Judaism? Mm -hmm. No. They said, go back to the law, which was given in Exodus. And nobody called them the Hilkiahites. Hilkiahites or or the Josiahites or the Hezekiah. No, they just said, go back to what God wrote. And that's like, that's really what we're saying is we're saying that Luke 8, 11 in the parable of the soils or the sower says that the seed is the word of God. If you have a seed that's thousands of years old, which this is a seed a word, a seed in word form, whenever you plant it, Christians are going to grow, right? Right. So it doesn't matter how long it is, when you plant this word of God, it's going to make Christians. Right, right. A a given seed type only gives a tree or a plant of that type. It doesn't give many varieties. You don't have a tree with many varieties of different fruit. We're just, we're trying to be like Hilkiah here. That's That's what we're trying to do. That's right. We're we're, we're stepping into the shoes of Hilkiah Mm -hmm. and we're saying to you, Here's the information. You have it. Just turn back to it and follow it. That's perfect. That's awesome. Check out the podcast resource page. We have a lesson there, which church to join. BJ Clark, it's a great lesson, one of my favorites over the years. And so we want you to join the church that you read about in your Bible. Okay, Be added to that church, not join a man-made church. Thanks for watching with us. We'll see you back on the next episode of the Authentic Christian Podcast. Have a good day. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show today. We'd like to mention you can download these episodes. They are sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network. We have an app available. You can check that out and get answers to life's biggest questions.